Hello, thanks for joining us here at Intelligent Controls. I am Mike, as always, and today we're going to be talking about cabling. Everything that you're gonna to need to consider when purchasing and setting up your Pylon Tech batteries. So to start out, what comes with every battery? Every battery is gonna come with three main things. The first are these little shorty connectors. These connect each battery together in parallel. As we can see, we have them right here and here and these come with every battery. They're rated for 120 amps a piece, and they utilize Amphenol Rad Socks. These are pretty cool. They're like a little Chinese finger trap, and they eliminate all the need for screwing things in. It eliminates all of the exposed metal on the front of the battery. They're waterproof, and they are vibration proof. So if you have things set up in a mobile configuration, you don't have to worry about your bolts coming loose. Next, Every battery is going to come with a little short battery communication jumper. These are utilized in paralleling the batteries together in a communication string, going from one link port to the other link port on each battery. Finally, we have our grounding wires, and these go to these little screws right here and then down to whatever you're grounding it to. So that is what comes with the battery. How about what doesn't come with the battery? What doesn't come with the battery is what's going to need to be purchased in the separately available cable kit. They come in a little box that looks like this right here, and they contain three items as well. Those three items are, first of all, a battery-to-battery -battery communication cable. This is just a longer version of these little shorty cables right here. We're gonna see later in the video how we utilize them. Next, we're going to have our battery-to-inverter communication cable, allowing us to establish closed-loop communications with whatever inverter we're connecting to. If you're hooking up to a Victron system, you use one of their supplied BMS cables. That's a V-CAN to CAN bus BMS type A cable. This one's available in 1.8 meters, and there's also another one that's five meters, I believe. Now, the other two things that are probably the most important that come in this cable kit are our end runs. These are six and a half feet a piece. They have on one end a standard eyelet, and on the other hand, those Amphenol Rad socks that we use to connect to the batteries themselves. They are rated for 120 amps, and uh, yeah, they're pretty sweet. I believe that we sell them on the website for 50 bucks. So for anybody that's thinking that they wanna just DIY their end runs, well, each one of these Amphenol Rad socks costs about $25 a piece purchased online. And so by just buying the cable kit, you're already saving yourself time and money, and uh, that, that goes a long way. So that's what's in the cable kit. That's what's with the batteries. Let me point out to you over here on the batteries themselves where everything gets utilized. So to begin with, we have that battery to inverter communication cable. This gets plugged in to the master battery. The master battery is designated by the open link port zero. We have a link port zero and a link port one. The link port one and the link port zero are gonna be used to connect our little shorty connectors. Plug into link port one, Plug into link port zero, establishing a master battery and a slave battery. Then we have our little shorty parallel battery uh, power cables right here. One, two. And finally, we have our 120 amp rated end runs. In this configuration, I have one on this battery and the negative on this battery. This allows us to have a nice, even distribution of power when we're drawing off of and charging these batteries. Paralleled with the shorties, then they're then run to the inverter with the end runs. Now over here, in this configuration, we have something a little different. What we have here is three batteries rather than two. I have two sets of end runs. Two of them connected up here, two of them connected down here with this middle battery just paralleled using the shorty connectors to the other two. Now right off the bat, you may ask, isn't that kind of a no-no in the battery world to have batteries connected with different lengths of wire? Because this middle battery is, I mean, that's a different set of lengths of wire connecting it versus these other two when we're going to our bus bar or to our inverter. Normally, yes, that is not something you wanna do because the variations in the internal resistance of the wire are going to result in a slightly different charge and discharge current. But for the pylon techs, that's not the case because pylon tech has a very advanced BMS that is going to actively manage the power coming in and out of every single battery, utilizing little MOSFETs that are connected on the BMS to every single cell. That allows us to compensate for any difference in our current experience by just connecting stuff with the shorty connectors and allows us to save money. Normally speaking, you would need to run every single battery to a bus bar utilizing end runs. 
With Pylon Tech's advanced BMS and the shorty cables, now we get to save 50 bucks and say spend that on ice cream or whatever. Now, let's talk a little bit about sizing. Obviously, these systems are a little small for the total max current that could be pulled through these end runs. This could take 120 amps. This right here could take 240 amps. Now in the real world, you wanna oversize everything. There's maybe some industrial applications where it's not a big deal to have your max current at the 1C rate, but generally speaking, nobody wants a battery bank that is going to be drawn down to zero after just one hour of use. So in that case, we oversize. What also is an advantage to oversizing with the pylon techs in particular is that you take full advantage of that active BMS. The more sandbox that the BMS has to play with, the more efficient it can make the batteries be. That also gives us some cool features that are really available only in the pylon techs. Say we talk about this set of batteries right here. Let's pretend that this bottom battery here gets cold because it's sitting on a cold concrete slab. The battery then turns off and is no longer going to provide a current. If our overall system is set up to only draw 120 amps as dictated by the max capacity of these end runs, well, this top battery is fully capable of providing that for up to an hour if it's at a full charge, allowing this battery time to perhaps warm back up, uh, say the sun comes out. Now, in that circumstance, what's gonna happen is this battery is going to take all of that current load. And when this battery turns back on and a charge current comes in, say for example, then this battery is gonna get all of that charge current. And that's all made possible by the active BMS. If we didn't have a system that was oversized and say this was, I uh, had two end runs set up and it was pulling a 240 amps total, it wouldn't have the room to do that. And what's going to happen is your total available power is going to instantly be downgraded. And that's if you're utilizing a Victron system. So what I mean by that utilizing a Victron system is DVCC. The Pylon Tech batteries play very well with that. They actually force DVCC on as soon as they're connected in communication. What that means is that the inverter is going to understand, because it's getting the data straight from the batteries, that this system is capable of providing 120 amps. When one battery turns off, it's actually going to downgrade that. It's gonna say, no, I don't want that much, I want less. And the inverter is going to know that. That way we don't end up in a situation in which the inverter thinks that it can give full juice, but the batteries aren't capable of handling that. Next, let's talk about this stack of three over here. Because our max available current from here is 240 amps. Now, in this, stack right here, we actually had a ratio of one end run to two batteries. Over here, we have a ratio of two end runs to three batteries. That right there is probably the lowest I would go in our ratio of end runs to battery. Uh, two to three or one to 1.5 would be another way to think about that. And that's because we want that wiggle room. We want our batteries to be able to provide more juice than the end runs can handle. That way, if one has to shut down, the other two are able to compensate for that. And honestly, you're probably not gonna be even aware that the circumstance happened until you check VRM a week or so later. So now that we've talked about these two systems separately, what happens if we were to combine them together for a total bank of five batteries? Well, that would actually be pretty simple. All we would have to do is decide which of these top batteries we want to be the master. Arbitrarily, I'm going to say this one. So now what we're going to do we're gonna come over to this battery. And we're gonna remove that BMS cable. Next, we need to put this in parallel communication with this stack of batteries over there. And that is where that battery to battery communication cable is going to come into play. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna move on down. So we've got our master battery, we've got our slave, we've got our slave, and now we've got an open link port one down here. We're going to then plug this battery to battery communication cable into there, and then come over to this master battery, or what used to be the master battery, plug it into link port zero. Now the battery is automatically gonna address. Got our master, slave, 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 and everything is in parallel. To make sure that these are paralleled uh, with their actual power, what we're gonna do is we're going to run our end runs all to the exact same bus bar or links distributor. Now, one thing to consider with what we've now done 
is uh, if you get your math wrong with your max possible loads, you could potentially put yourself in a less than optimal, potentially dangerous situation. Let's talk through that. So what we have here is three sets of end runs, each one rated at 120 amps. That gives us a total theoretical throughput capacity of 360 amps. But we have five batteries and not all of them have the same ratio of end run to battery. Let's see why that matters. So 360 amps divided by five, that is going to give us 72 amps per battery. And that is well within the recommended limits for these batteries. They will happily give that, but over here, we only have one set of end runs. So what happens if both of these batteries are giving off 72 amps at the same time? Well, add that together, we've got 144 amps. And remember that these end runs are rated for 120. That is not an optimal situation. We don't wanna put 144 amps through these end runs, which means that we need to size our maximum loads accordingly. Really, what this system is now capable of providing is 60 amps per battery, because that is what's going to give us a maximum of 120 off of these two batteries right here. If we wanted to run 360 amps, well, there's a couple ways we could do that. Theoretically, you could start running more end runs to these batteries, but what I would recommend is that you actually toss a whole nother battery into the mix. If we were to put a third battery on top of here and bring in one more set of end runs, wire it exactly the way we have it over here, then everything is going to be perfectly in balance. Everything's gonna be operating the same way. These two batteries are going to get actively managed. We're never going to override anything. And uh, I think that's a much more robust system. So hopefully you found this video at least a little bit useful. I know that we talked about a lot of math, but ultimately the Pilantech batteries actually have a very simple system for cabling. You don't really have to mess around with bus bars. You don't have open connections. You don't have to torque everything down. It's simple as connecting your RADSOC connectors and doing a little teeny bit of math to make sure that you're not overloading your end runs or your batteries. Remember, at the end of the day, if you oversize your bank, then you are good to go. I would be happiest if I saw a full stack of five batteries with only one set of end runs coming off of it, because that means that I have a system that drawing at 120 amps is going to last all night and is not going to end up putting me in any kind of a danger of overloading any individual battery. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. We are definitely watching that and I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If instead you would prefer to email me, my email is mike at icmontana.com and I am happy to help you out that way as well. Thanks for joining us. I hope you have a great day.